Spark using a drum set later with Lego creation. Um, I promise I made my son to mention in there. Plus a couple other challenges that were pitched to me by some colleagues. Uh, they bet me that I couldn't talk about um, a little bit of sighting during the speech or a party that donkeys would be at. So the challenge met, and there will also be some other opportunities in there as well for um, some random things that have been put in so it turns into who wines it anyway. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with the three words that scared me the most as an eighth grade drummer. Now, in the eighth grade, I had only been playing drums for about a year and a half when I got recruited to the Obsidian Junior High School Jazz Band. And those three words caused me to get scared, panic, nausea, shake, agonized, just absolutely agonized, and scorn other players in the group, director would glare me down. <laughs> Solo ad lib. Solo ad libitum. It one's pleasure and liberty. Now, if you're a trumpet player or a sax player or a guitar player, you get the rhythm section to play along with you in your solo, you all have chord changes. Somebody might even write in what you're supposed to play. The drummer gets that. That's it. So, this terrified me, a year and a half playing, pretty young at it. Two, ad libitum, Latin, Catholic, scared. So those <laughs> things, those kind of things, like, so anytime I saw that, I was like, oh gosh. So I have a couple of ways, and I will demonstrate, because normally when I speak, I like having a big problem, this one works well. Um, I'll kind of show you how I dealt with it as an eighth grade. But, and that, I was like, okay, that's the challenge. You gotta understand the framework. 
There's some rules that exist that will make her stupid. Um, but you've got to devote time and energy to kind of learning how the rules of this framework work, and then realize that an opportunity is there. And then testing patterns that work. So having it, you know, you, you're given that, so then when you're, we're finally at this again, our friend Solo Ad Lib, that's the space we have to fit in. This big. Or this. What is, what's the purpose of putting this in Jets? To connect two ideas together. Well, we need to put something in there. You, you're going to build tension with it. You're going to release tension. You're going to have a, there's going to be something in there that, what is the purpose of that? Understand why it's put in that the framework of the song, and then understand the framework of that. How many different ways can you do it? Then creativity becomes being able to see what's possible rather than imagining the inconceivable. You have your bingo cards. And rather than, you're, 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 you're actually, pardon me, you're examining everything within that box rather than looking inside. What can you do here? This is a, it's not that three form idea. It's where are the nuances and how can you do that? I like, I have a messed up version of Piaget in my head. Um, there's ways to describe things. For example, sensory motor, and I'll be as concise as I can, not as abstract, but sensory motor, cup. Child touches it, it's a cup. <coughs> Concrete, use a cup for drinking. Formal, mom, I can make a cup with my hands. Abstract, mom, I need a cup for baseball. <laughs> Good, okay. <laughs> that reference work. Um, but we have to have that abstract idea of the framework. You're thinking of space in that solo ad lib as that framework that you're in and out of. There are rules in it. And then as you do that, that's how the framework evolves, as opposed to it being, OK, let's come up with a brand new idea that might be somewhere else. In there. And you're, you're working patterns within that. One of the first examples I can give of this is my, my college track. You know, framework is you go to college, you get a job. I went to college. Decided to major in music because I thought that's what you did in order to be a rock drummer. I'm um, the sharpest knife and spoon in front of you. And after my first year, I decided, you know what? I think I've done all my major. What goes well with music? Political science. <laughs> Why not? I'm interested in both, and they work ish. And so my framework became okay, how do I fit this all in my schedule? And that's the solo ad lib. So I'm solo ad living through there, and then I graduate, I'm like, okay, I'll work for the House of Representatives. Did two years there, and I thought, I'm going to go back and teach. I'm going to be, I worked two years for the House of Representatives. I decided, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to teach history. I'm going to be a history teacher. I'm going to be a government teacher. Walk into every interview, and they're like, hey, what do you coach? Nothing. Can you do cross country? No. Can you do anything else? Play drums. Can you teach music? Why not? And then my first four years of teaching was a big solo ad lib on how to teach music. And, um, thank you very much. Uh, in, in, uh, in two years of, or in, in 16 years of teaching, I taught two history classes. And you can see how well that is because I've been hired here by a scale, which is an outstanding opportunity. Um, and, you know, they teach history once, I'm like, that was fine. Go back to music. Um, but in the same way, too, the framework was there. You know, you, and, I'll never forget, too, at one point in time in one of the interviews, they're like, yes, but can you do anything else? I'm like, well, I can sing how this bill becomes a law. I'm just a bit of a Can you keep singing? Yeah. So that's, you know, your framework is there, but how do we add living? Okay, it's a good thing I have a seven and a half year old son because now I can justify all the language I bought before he was born. Um, and the fact that now it's, they're, they're great. You can, you can build your own little communities, you can play dictator with them, you can booby trap your house. That's the framework. We stack them on top, we see how big we can get. You build things with them. Or maybe we make them into what we don't see, the mosaic. That's the photo of it, or something like that. Opportunities that exist that we didn't see. I got the idea to look at it, I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll try the picture of my son. And how often do we find framework, an abstract understanding of the idea, so we start playing with them. Um, the biggest one that I can think of, other examples without pictures, um, I think a lot about uh, parenting. And they're, that's, that's just been a big ad lib. My wife, Allie, was reading a book, at, and 
she was reading that at one point in time that the child will be able from crawling be able to stand themselves up. And then that it's going to happen that Grant is two months younger at the time. And while she's reading this passage, my son Grant is doing that. And I'm laughing. I'm like, put the book down, we're done. <laughs> but he didn't read it. Or he read it and he's like, well, I'm show them. <laughs> and hence, seven and a half years of ad living. Recipes are great. I think it's been mentioned here before. I mean, like you have a recipe for guacamole. Oh, I'm gonna put it in there. Durian. Got it. <laughs> Mention of durian and guacamole? Challenge accepted. <laughs> the one I think of the most is uh, the, the framework, because I think of the framework of being music. And how often I've had teachers that every time I would get, you'd mess up, it's like stop, insult, back to rehearsal. And the one I try and channel the most as an educator is, uh, is a very dear friend of mine. I worked with him for five years. And as he was our choral director, and he would only raise his voice in excitement. So midway during the practice, during, midway during rehearsal, you're like, yes! What? You did it right. Why didn't you let us finish it? I just have to tell you, you did it right. Okay. <laughs> and then like, he raised his voice in anger twice in 20 years of knowing him. And generally, he had enslaved for something that the wheels came off the books. But it was just how often do we look at a framework? and be able to manipulate it to the best of our abilities. And that's, that's, that's kind of what I, that's, that's my biggest pitch on that. To, to conclude on, on all of this, and to, I was on a grueling trek about two weeks ago with the students from my scale, and uh, we took a lot of, we were hiking four and a half, six hours a day, and it's you know, up and down, and a lot of that. And I was thinking a lot about steps that we take in our life. And then at one point in time, it was, how many steps, there'll come a point in time in my life where I have fewer steps ahead of me than I have behind. And that those steps become even more important. And uh, granted, I, I do this reflection quite often because I think there's a bus outside with my name on it, so when he says, oh, I did that reflection. <laughs> but we sit there and think, how often do we sit there and go, well, was my life meaningful? Did it have purpose or anything like that? challenge you to think is, how did you create from that framework of your life? How did you ad lib? Did I ad lib and was I the best parent, father, husband, teacher, steward of the earth, friend? Did I create? Did I ad lib right? Did I find all the holes in the framework on it? And it's, that's, that to me is where creativity is. It's finding those nuances. This is the pattern I was presented with, but I'm going to do something a little different within that pattern. The good news about this thought process is I'm already one step ahead and coming up with my head to my gravestone. And so, um, <laughs> Thank you so much today for coming. And <laughs>